to Steampunk. This is your host, Steampunk Bob, and today we enter the Binary Domain. Binary Domain is a third-person sci-fi action game. In a way, it looks like it wants to explore similar ideas to Isaac Asimov's books about robots. The story aims for a very ambitious exploration, examining what makes a man a man and a machine a machine. Our main characters are a rust crew, basically a hit squad who have the job of going places that are suspected to have overly human robots, find proof, kill the robots, capture whoever is building the robots, etc., etc. We've received intelligence that the Japanese robotics company, the Amida Corporation, has been producing passable human robots called hollow children in the setting. So, we're sent in covertly to find proof of this, toss Amida's ass at a chopper, and drag him to Geneva to be tried for his crimes. The hollow children in many ways remind me of characters from one of my favorite board games, Battlestar Galactica. In that game, and the TV show I hear was based on it that I didn't really watch, there are basically human robots called Cylons. They are physically almost indistinguishable from humans, and some are even sleeper agents who don't even themselves know they're Cylons. Same kind of thing here with Hollow Children. They don't know they are anything but human. It really has a lot of interesting story implications that they only really scratch the surface of in the game. I'm not sure if they intend to do a sequel or spin-off novel or what, but the questions they raise in the game are interesting in that respect. Now, in addition to their attempt at a very ambitious story, the gameplay has one risky gimmick to it. It attempts to use voice recognition as a major gameplay element. You can converse with your squad mates, you can give out orders, or you can just curse when things hit the fan and hear other characters' opinions on your panic. I was a bit iffy about the idea of the gimmick, but Siri has some pretty good voice recognition, and it's been years since Lifeline, so maybe it'll work? The French unit should be here soon. We'll wait here. Or do you think we should get moving? Move. Charge. Go. Move. 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 What? Something the matter? <laughs> Well, the French unit should be here soon. We'll wait here. Or do you think we should get moving? Move! 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 Go! Charge! Move. Go! Charge! Move. Move! Move! Go! Charge! Move! Go! Char. Well, something the matter? Yes, this gimmick is the matter. Oh. To be fair, the game does give you the option of turning the voice recognition off and allowing you to make keyboard decisions, right. but no I wanted no to give the attempt a fair shake. So no rush, a brother. very fair you shake. As I went through most of the game with the voice commands, right tweaking the settings and trying to so over-enunciate every word, but it was never at all reliable for me. The game is overall adequately designed. It's a third-person, cover-based shooter, but it definitely has some hiccups to it. First of all, it's clear whoever wrote the tutorial section had never shown key bindings on a PC before. Anytime any mouse button is involved, they just show a picture of the M key on a keyboard. Not the word mouse, not even LMB. This means you end up with tutorial messages like this. Great. M to aim, M to fire. I'm glad those are rather standard controls that I would have guessed without your help, but that is a completely useless way to tell me what to do. 
And then there's the default reload key mod. M, of course. No, not the letter M. The middle mouse button. What? There's a few other odd key bindings in that several things are bound together. Sprint, tumble, and take cover are all the same key. Your static burst super move is bound to reloading, which means that you have a move that you have to hold and charge up tied to the middle mouse button. It also means you can't do a static burst, which uses its own ammunition, unless your assault rifle is topped off. You can't rebind keys or change screen resolution or really much of anything with the in-game options. You have to use the game's configuration utility. And even then, there's these wide swaths of territory covered with given buttons. If I wanted to make sprint, say, left shift, I would have to make tumble and take cover also be left shift. And then there's sometimes when the instructions given on screen aren't just misleading and something you get used to, but th there's this chunk at the end of chapter 5 that has a bit where you need to jump over an obstacle. Anywhere else in the game, I would get over that with either space and towards the obstacle or F, depending on the game's mood about that particular rock. But here, the instructions say R. That is patently, provably untrue. Pressing R there will do jack. Okay, if you change the reload key binding to R, then it uh, will reload your gun. But you know what it won't do? Drag Dan's ass over the piece of concrete in his way. You use F. The cover mechanic is a little... iffy sometimes, too. The only way Dan knows how to aim his gun is to stand up and expose himself to fire, even if he's aiming at an enemy who flanked his position that he could aim at without standing up. I mean, I understand you might not give him the full aim bonus because he's not positioned in a great way to aim, but blind fire at the guy two yards away should not be one of my better options. Sometimes it's also unclear what direction will make you slide along the wall, and what direction will unglue you from it and make you stand up like a big stupid bullseye. The character improvement, however, they did right. You get these items called nanomachines because it's the future! Each character has their own nanomachines, and they also have a 2x3 grid of space to equip them in. From the pause menu, you can arrange nanomachines of your choice in this space to maximize efficiency. It's a very straightforward, easy to understand system, but it also has strategic choices in it. And a lot of the action set pieces are very interesting for the most part. Like this one here, where these robot chimp things are trying to grab one of my squad mates as she jumped on the elevator we were using to escape. I pull out my pistol and have to aim carefully to shoot them off her. Really solid action scene. Then comes a car chase where I'm standing out the sunroof and shooting and pursuing robots. It's okay, but then comes the fact that the driver is swerving around which screws up my aim for two reasons. First, he's whipping around, and that moves my reticle by necessity. Second, Dan is obviously not wearing a seatbelt, so he gets bumped around and put into a little stun animation sometimes. Yes, it's realistic, but no. I don't want to have times where my character is out of my control WHILE I'M BEING SHOT! For how linear the bulk of the game is, the level design is sometimes a bit odd. Like how I mentioned before, it's inconsistent if you use F or space to vault over stuff. There was a section where I needed to deal with some ozone gas dispensers that were trying to sterilize a room while I was in it trying to breathe the air. And Kane, my robot teammate, helpfully told me, As there appear to be four gas-emitting units, we must destroy them all before you expire. Every time. I used a ventilation chamber to catch my breath. 
Side note, ozone gas is just as harmless as bullets, apparently. There was no separate air meter, so hanging out in the ozone-filled death room just slowly glopped raspberry preserves on my face until I went to a ventilation chamber to get a breath of fresh air. And I needed to get fresh air sooner if I got shot. Well, we needed to destroy the gas pumps. This is a fine objective. It makes great sense. And I'll admit, part of this is my fault. But I wandered around for over ten minutes trying to find two of them. With Kane telling me... As there appear to be four gas-emitting units, we must destroy them all before you expire. Every time I went to get fresh air. In hindsight, I guess I should have been able to find them easier. But this annoyance did cause the voice recognition to give me a chuckle. After hearing, As there appear to be four gas-emitting units, we must destroy them all before you expire. What felt like the thousandth time. Where are they? This is Faye. Security units are massing. You better hurry to the roof, too. I got a retroactive chuckle out of it anyway. There's shops scattered throughout the game where you can buy nanomachines, upgrades to your squad's weapons, ammunition, secondary weapons, grenades, all that good stuff with e-money. E-money, because it's the future! But where's this money coming from? If it's coming from our bosses in Geneva slash Washington, why do they care so much about me beating a robot to death with the butt of my rifle to reward me extra for it on top of destroying the robot? And why didn't they send the team in with the best guns we could find anyway? Russ crews are supposed to be the best in the world. And how has the Japanese government not noticed the account that happens to follow a swath of destruction through the city that seems to be getting funds from outside Japan? Japan is back to being a complete isolationist state in this game. Any foreign money should be questionable. Of course, it makes even less sense if my money is being sick. salvaged from the robots somehow. Why does more money show up in my account if I take down multiple robots in one shot? Boss battles are pretty much always against an awesome-looking giant robot, often requiring different strategies, and they look great. But they just have too much health. I'll unload bullet after bullet, clip after clip, in the big, glowing weak spot, but I'm never completely sure I'm actually hurting them. I don't think this would be such a big problem if I had a little health bar for them, so I could see it visibly chip away, but I guess I can see that breaking immersion, so... Okay, I guess. I looked back on my script at this point and thought, Man! I must hate this game! All this nitpicking and whining? There's easily four times as much complaining as praise so far. And I considered that for a while. No. I don't hate this game. It has flaws. It has a lot of flaws, but it has a lot of charm to it at times. For example, the game takes good advantage of the fact that the enemies are robots. If you blow their head off, that's where they keep their eyes and IFF circuits, so they start fighting their allies, or at minimum act as a temporary distraction when the enemy starts riddling them with bullets instead of you. You can blast their arm off and watch as they scramble to pick their gun back up with their good hand. You can destroy legs and force them to crawl, or you can just nail their center of mass and put them down. The characters, for the most part, are pretty solid. You quickly develop favorites, as they all have their own reasonably well-developed personality, and each has a different tactical use. I personally use the French battle robot a lot, despite the fact that his introduction drives me crazy. Kane! We oui, miss you. You let a scraphead drive? And you call him Kane? I am a combat model, mademoiselle. Line number CN7. Kane is, how you say, the little joke. Uh, it may be, because I don't speak French, but how is this a joke? The 
French word for seven is sept, a word that does not have a long A sound in it. Ken would be a much better nickname for the robot. He also has a misunderstanding what a heavy weapon is. Oh man, that's a lot of scrap heads. Back in heavy artillery. That is not heavy, monsieur. What? This is heavy. This is a pistol. Okay, I guess it's a Robocop-style hand cannon, but... After claiming he uses a heavy weapon, Kane uses a machine pistol. Yes, Robocop uses a machine pistol, but Robocop is a cop, not a special forces hit squad used to invade foreign countries. On the other hand, Kane is incredibly durable, and I do genuinely enjoy having someone around who will tell me... Girls fail to express your magnificence! Sometimes the dialogue is a bit utilitarian and clunky, especially when a boss appears and everybody is so surprised, like, oh no, it's not like they've sent five more giant robots after us, this time they're really trying to kill us. However, aside from those goofy moments, and a few moments where Dan acts like a bit of an asshole, the characters are pretty likable. The game is also very well optimized as far as system resources used. I almost never had any real performance issues, even with my awful, outdated video card. The only issue on that front is, if your game uses the mouse in its controls, you need to lock the mouse in the window while your game is in focus. This game was less awful about it than Shank 2 because binary domain pauses when it's no longer the focused window, but I'd still occasionally bump the window so my recording was skewed, or there was actually one time where my mouse had invisibly moved up to the red X in the top right corner and I closed the game the next time I tried to fire. The story is above average, I'd say. They establish their world reasonably well, especially given that no gameplay happens outside Tokyo. There's some questionable sci-fi elements I found a bit past my personal suspension of disbelief, but that is mostly the Chapter 6 exposition dump. On the other hand, during Chapter 6, we run into the problem of... The villain's plan isn't unreasonable make some pretty good points that I don't want to spoil in this video. Binary Domain does do some interesting story bits. I just wish it had spent more time chewing on some of the ideas it offers the player. The line between man and machine gets real blurry in sci-fi like this, and that gives us great questions to examine and wonder about in our own world. Again, it has some gameplay flaws, no denying that. But it's got the strengths of an okay, mindless action game with a slightly beefier story. It's not a great game, but it's probably worth a look. Anyway, this is Steampunk Bob. Out. No disrespect intended, sir, but you Yanks do tend to make a lot of noise. Know what I mean? Not all of us, Gregory. Just those two. Oh, then clearly these are the men for the job.